Hello, well I'm lasting the shoes today. So that's putting the upper um, around the, the midsole. So I've got my wooden last here. I've got the midsole all prepared. I've got my upper, which always I always think they look a bit like sort of clown's feet. They look huge in this stage. Anyway, so the idea is to get this all firmly affixed to the midsole. And to do that, I will be using uh, little nails, lasting nails, and my lasting pliers. And I'll be pulling all the leather over the last, trying to get it as tight as I can, so that it's all fitting nicely and looking shoe-like. So I've put some string around my last to make it easy to extract. I also, if you remember with these lasts, I cut them in half. So there is actually a cut line down here and a screw that holds the two halves together. So when I come to extract, it should help having the string on there as well. I can separate the last and pull the bits out. The upper, I need to be careful it doesn't stick when I come to be using glue. So what I'll be using is some baby talc, just ordinary standard baby talcum powder and I will quite liberally coat my last, particularly around the glue areas. First thing I'm going to do, and I mean, I think most people when they're lasting would um, secure the back with a nail, just so that height doesn't drop. You can, if you're not careful, you can lose the, before you know it, you're at the wrong height there. I will put a few nails in. I'll try and get both my shoes nailed to the last just so to hold their top position and then I'll start working underneath. That's the plan. So I'm just putting some of this talcum powder along on my last. <laughs> this reminds me of um, having babies. You do need to keep these laces done up throughout otherwise you'll be stretching as you're lasting and then opening up all of this and of course it will all go horribly wrong. So what I want to do is, obviously I've got my back heel nicely correct for height. I want to make sure that my laces are following down the centre of my last as much as possible. And I want to try and have this front bit looking as even as I can get it. So it's also just initial positioning really at this stage. I think that is roughly about right. I'll do the same thing with the other one and then I will take a fresh look at them and just put them side by side. I'm going to put one in there. This is where the lasting pliers are quite good because they have this like hammerhead, this bulbous hammerhead on them. The nails I'm using are proper lasting nails. So they're very thin, about an inch long, about 1.1 millimeters thick. These ones are copper plated, which means they don't rust. So they're very good if you're using fine, colorful leather, you won't get like rust marks. Well, I've got my shoe positioned on the last and I've put a few little anchoring nails in there. What I'm gonna do now is start the lasting where I pull the leather with lasting pliers over and put nails in to hold it there. What will happen eventually is I'll be stitching it down to my feather channel here. So the idea of the nails is really just to hold it all in position and then I'll be gluing and stitching. Now the actual lasting process, I've looked at numerous old books and I've seen it's done in several different ways. So some people seem to do both layers and some do a first lasting where they soak it in water and then a second lasting. Other people seem to just do the one lasting where they pull it all in and do it as one go. And other people seem to do the lining, get that all in glued and trimmed and then get the outer done. I'm gonna try that method because whilst there is a risk for you get puckering in your lining, because the way I've done this I can pull the whole of my upper back. I can check that my lining goes in really tight and I don't have any gap here on the last. What tends to happen is you get a gap just here, sort of across the vamp, where there's a gap in your last. So 
I'm going to do the lining one. I'm going to pull it in best I can, tack it down and see how that goes. If I'm satisfied with that, I'm then going to glue my lining to this outer edge and then I'll do the outer. So if you like, it's like a two part stage. But, um, it's one of those things, you just have to decide which method you're going to use. So that, that is my approach. So the idea of this is to get it as tightly drawn over as one can. So the sort of very rough sequence of my nailing will be the toe and then pull it in about here, pull it in about there, pull it in at the heel and the sides there. So you're sort of spreading a few nails around. <clears throat> I'm pulling quite hard, putting a little bit of twist on as I pull to try and close some of these puckering gaps. The good thing about the lasting pliers is you can pull with them and then you've got a hammer. So I feel I'm getting an awful lot of material down this front end, so I'm twisting and pulling that way a bit to try and get rid of that level of puckering. The hammer itself on the lasting pliers does act as a little bit of a lever, which is quite useful. They grip the lever very nicely. I can feel it sort of stretching quite well, which is good. So I will just take a peep at what is happening underneath this. Yeah, I think actually I need to pull that more, but it's not too bad. It's doing what I hoped it would do. It is, it's a bit loose there, but I can have another go at pulling that again in a minute. I think that is going in the right way. So I'm reasonably happy with that at the moment. I'll carry on. Well, I'm getting quite a few nails around this edge now. I'm pulling the lining in and it seems to be going all right. As I do it, I'm finding one or two little things which are quite helpful. So first of all, I've gone down in the size of my lasting pliers. So I was using number fours. I'm now using number twos. And the advantage of these for this particular job is they have a smaller snout. So they're just generally smaller and they can get into a finer sort of surface. I've heard some people use pincers to get in but actually these are quite nice and small nose. The other thing I found is that obviously you can use the hammer to lever and get some pressure but you can then tip the nose down because it's such a curved beak. If you tip it down you can sort of force the lever to hold fair and then you can tap it in. Tap the tack in like that and it's just quite a good way to sort of being able to get that nose to go down again puts the lever in exactly the right place for getting a nail in. I've got to come back and revisit the toe but I am getting uh, basically I want the first like centimetre half inch to be as flat as possible and so I need to get rid of the puckering here but it, it does work if one keeps pulling at it you can end up with a smooth margin. All this leather on the inside will get trimmed off. Because what I'm going to do with the lining is stick down this outer margin. But this, as I say, will all get trimmed off. So you don't have to worry about that. At the moment, I feel it's going OK. Um, I'm finding, actually, if I lean at the moment, the nail's slightly outward it's a little bit easier getting them in. If one was doing the second layer, one could then actually hit the nails over and pull the lever in as you hit them over. So I think a little bit of outward movement on the nails isn't a bad idea. But it's, it's the kind of thing, as you do it, you think, 
all these little things, little refinements, and you think, oh, next time I do this, I'll try, you know, getting them all a bit more in line, getting them all outward, etc., etc. So what I've done now, I've put some glue along the top of my ridge, my feather line. So I've put glue along here. So I've just used some ordinary leather work, um, white glue. And then I've put the tacks down the other side of it just to hold this while it was gluing and ditto at the back here. And I can now take these nails out because that lining will hold in position and I can focus on my ends. So on the toe and on the heel where I need to get this all down flatter for the first centimetre as it comes round. I will then be able to trim all of this off up to the edge of my feather, up to the inside edge of my leather wall, my feather. It's along there, I can trim it all. And I'll then be ready to last over my upper, but I'll obviously put the insert in for the stiffener under here. And the heel stiffener I'll glue in. So that's the plan at the moment. I'll take some of these nails out just so I don't keep catching myself on them. And I'll have a go at redoing this toe area. I'm just using some pincers to pull out the tacks and it's quite easy to keep them straight and then I can reuse them with this toe area. It's so sort of bunched in and fluted it's actually quite sort of tricky but if I pull it it goes flat so what I'm going to do is remove some of these tacks at the end. So I'm going to Put some glue along that feather wall there and then I'll hammer back over long and then I'll trim it afterwards once the glue's dried. So the same sort of thing that I've been doing with these side walls here where I'm going to be trimming this all off. <laughs> so having had a drip of glue go down the front here of my toe I have liberally doused it all in talcum powder and wiped it all out so I am now ready to carry on and what I'm doing is I'm just putting a small bead of glue along the top of my feather so it's not a huge amount but it's enough to obviously stick this lining lever into position so I'm going to do what I did before I'm going to be pulling and lasting but I'm going to last the nails in just beyond the feather so on the inside of the feather. I'm pleased that I left a lasting allowance of an inch and a half plus when I was doing this because I if I hadn't been generous with that lasting allowance I think I would now be having trouble. You do need a certain amount to get a nice pull. Oh this is working quite well. thing is I feel if I can get the lining to last happily then hopefully I'll be able to get the upper to also be quite nice but that is certainly going pretty flat it's not bad at all not perfect but I'm happy with that the end of the cobbler's hammer is quite useful for trying to get this lever manipulated down and flat because it gives quite a nice little bit of straight line pressure but you can also to an extent get between the nails as well and try and get rid of some of these like mountains or pipes and um, try and beat it down. Well I'm just doing the heel area at the moment and I'm beating it down with my cobbler's hammer but this one it has a very wide end on it here, peening end or whatever you call it um, so what I need actually is one with a narrower end, so I have got another one here. I really didn't think you'd need two cobbler hammers because the other ends are similar, but this is actually going to be very useful for getting in where I can't otherwise get in. I'll try and take this lever down a bit flatter. At the moment I'm just trying to get the lever to go across the last and sort of spreading it out a bit with a hammer and as I pull it underneath it sort of helps getting it formed and sort of spread. So nice um, 
these hammerheads, they're not completely flat here. They're curved, very gently curved. So as you use the hammer to hit, you don't get the edges at all. You know, you can go and you're not marking the lever at any point. Very nice. I've polished this one up because it was a bit suffering um, with like a 1500 grit emery just to get it lovely and smooth. I've just inserted the heel stiffener and glued it in and I've just been again beating down around here with the end of my cobbler's hammer to try and get it as flat and as solid as I can like trying to form around the side of the shoe to get everything nice and firm and flat and round on the last. So that's the first part of my lasting done. I've got my linings all lasted down and I've got the heel stiffeners in each shoe. What I'll be doing next is lasting the, the uppers. So I'll be pulling all these over in a similar sort of way and cutting them just on the edge of the feather there in the same sort of way. And um, I'll obviously make sure just before I start doing that that everything's lined up nicely on the top. And when I do it, I'll obviously be putting in my toe stiffener um, over the toes. I think my main, if you like, thoughts on having done the lasting of the lining, I mean, you do have to take your time, you do have to try and push everything in and work methodically. But it's a couple of things really. One is traditional cobbler's hammer, really useful for beating the outside of the shoe and getting things down and shifted into position, getting the lever sort of manipulated down, really useful for that. I found the smaller cobbler's hammer with this larger flat end really good for bashing down um, and also getting nails down and getting between nails. So that was that. And I guess the other sort of main thing that I found, which I hadn't really appreciated, is it's quite useful having the lighter weight pliers because the nose beak can get in in the smaller gaps. I think if I had to just choose one set of lasting pliers, I'd go for these number twos, which are smaller, in preference to the larger number four. Apart from that, I guess the main things were I found I really had to be careful with the talcum powder to make sure I got it all in where there might be glue spread and I tried to keep my gluing to the minimum and I obviously made sure I had my extraction method ready so I can separate the last and pull out the two halves of it in advance. But all that aside, those are sort of like the main things that I picked up from doing the liners. I'll have to apply some of that now when I come to do the, the uppers. Anyway, that will be in part two. So thanks very much for watching and I will see you for part two of lasting. Bye bye then.